Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Star Trek Online. So, I have some explaining to do before we start the next uh, mission here, and uh, I'm in the middle of doing stuff on Ensign Ricky, and I wanted to go ahead and stop and explain what I'm doing and tell you guys what I'm up to so uh, you don't freak out, but it's stuff that you can do when you hit in-game that you'll be able to do as well. And I just wanted to show you how you can uh, replay missions to get um, new gear. Okay, so in the last episode, we hit Vice Admiral level 50, which is the highest uh, rank you can get in the game. And now that once you hit that level 50, any mission that you go and replay will have Mark 11 gear, which is the highest gear you can get for replay missions. Now that's not the highest technical gear in the game. The, uh, there is Mark 12 stuff in the game. Mark 12 gear. But that gear is very expensive if you find it on the exchange. Extremely expensive. Way beyond your reach or my reach to uh, get it by purchasing it with energy credits. Um, or you have to craft it yourself. You can do that and we don't have any crafting skill right now. Or um, you can get Mark 12 gear by doing the STFs and getting enough EDCs or uh, that very rare salvage uh, to buy Mark 12 uh, Borg specific gear. Um, and those are about the only ways of getting Mark 12 gear or in special drops. If you play this game in like elite mode, um, you, sh you should probably get some Mark 12 drops. Since there's not a huge difference between Mark 11 and 12, I mean, it's just, you know, one, one little notch up. Um, and it's so hard to get the Mark 12 stuff when you're just, you know, when you just first make it to level 50. Um, the best deal is to just concentrate on getting Mark 11 stuff and gearing out totally with Mark 11 stuff because that you can accomplish, that you can do. And then over time, if you want to stick with the game, you can work towards getting Mark 11 item here, a Mark, I mean a Mark 12 item here, another Mark 12 item here, and, and just building up slowly with Mark 12 stuff. I, I, I've got um, three other characters in this game, three main characters on Federation side, and I have just now, after all this time, uh, got them Mark 12 gear. And it's taken me quite a while just to get them Mark 12 stuff. And I and I don't even have Mark 12 stuff on all of them. Um, I have kind of a mix of 11 and 12 stuff with some of them. So the, the way that you can get the Mark 11 stuff now that you're level 50 is just by simply replaying missions. Um, there's You don't have to spend any money to get it, which means energy credits and all that. So like if I go back to the Klingon War, the very first thing, the very first mission we ever did, remember, was Stranded in Space. Remember that mission? Minimum rank Lieutenant 1. <laughs> the very, very, very first mission we did. Well, if I go back and replay it now, um, look what the rewards are. Um, I have a Mark 11 shield array um, that's that has a, a capacity modifier or a uh, Mark 11 shield array that has a plasma modifier um, and or I can get an energy dampening armor Mark 11 poly al al alloy weave armor Mark 11 all that gear all the way back to the first episode is now all Mark 11 so whatever the rewards were for those missions they've been upgraded to Mark 11 so I went back and I looked at every single mission to see what the rewards were for every single mission to figure out what I want to replay in order to get gear on my bridge officers for ground combat and uh, for my ship. Because you see, now I can get a quantum torpedo launcher Mark uh, 11 with accuracy. Uh, but the uh, what I found out is mostly during all the Klingon War episodes, all of these are going to be uh, uncommon gear or green gear. Uh, there were some rare items, like uh, here's the Disruptor Pulse Wave Mark 11, uh, some rare items there, um, but most of the rest were uncommon. So this one did have, so, you know, here's a hybrid beam array plasma disruptor or a paratrinic shield or a 
Federation Type 1, which we already had. Um, those are some rare items, but most of everything else above all this was all um, uncommon. But as you go into the Romulan mystery and on and on, a lot more of the stuff will be rare items. For example, here's a rare plasma full auto rifle with uh, two modifiers on it, or a plasma high density beam. Um, so I just looked under each episode to see what the rewar rewards were and find out what I want to replay. And a after that, it's just pretty much a grinding mission. Like, for example, personal shield. If I wanted to give my bridge officers a personal shield, I mean, here's a, here's a, here's a great personal shield right here. Two great ones. Personal shield mark 11 with capacity and regeneration. Or personal shield mark 11 with uh, two times capacity. So if I wanted to give all my bridge officers a good shield, I could just replay, what was this mission, uh, Minefield? Yeah, Minefield. I could just replay Minefield over and over and over, you know, and get that shield and totally equip my bridge officers with an awesome shield. And so that's pretty much what I've done over the last couple of days. Um, but I'm not finished. I'm in the middle of it. You'll see skirmishes right here because skirmish is one of the ones that I have chosen to use to do some replay stuff on. Um, for example, come down here. Oops, that's not where I want. Romulan Mist. No, not Romulan. Klingon War. Um, and it would be under skirmish. And I can't hail it because I've already. See, if I drop it, it's probably going to tell me I have to wait. Let's see. Nope. Okay. Replay. Skirmish gave me some awesome things um, that I have used. One of the things is I replayed it and got the subspace field modulator. I have not explained that yet and I wish I had gotten this device earlier. It is for your ship and I will explain it in a minute. Uh, I replayed this mission and got that for my ship. Okay. Then I decided I looked at all the shields that you can get by replaying missions, and this is the shield I settled on. I liked this one, the Phase Shifted Personal Shield Mark 11. It is a very rare item, you can see it's purple, so it's very rare, and though it does not have the most capacity, it has a 291 maximum shield capacity, you can get higher capacity by getting like that capacity modifier on shields, cap or cap times 2 or cap times 3 and your capacity to be much higher. But what I liked on this one is it also had a shield regeneration, plus 5.1 shield regeneration, which will help speed up shield regeneration. And it reduces psionic damage by 40%. And the reason why I like that is because these next few uh, missions that we're going to be playing are um, dealing with the uh, Undine, and the Undine, uh, under the Undine Advance here, the, those missions we have left, uh, the Undine use a psionic attack. Um, they basically kind of like shoot a psionic wave at you from their head. Um, so this personal shield um, reduces psionic damage to all my bridge officers. So I decided, hey, you know what? I'm mean, playing those missions anyway. Let's just give them this shield. It's not the highest capacity shield, but it does have that psionic damage resistance and it has the shield regeneration so that I get faster shield regeneration for my bridge officers. So now we can go look at my bridge officers and you will see here's my Anar, for example. She has the phase shifted personal shield and my Borg now has the phase shifted personal shield. I need to do do it for my Breen and um, in our Borg Breen. I need to do it for my Breen. One, two, three, four, yeah. Because my Jim Hadar, I'll explain that in a minute, I did other stuff. So I need to do it again to get it for my Breen. Now for the armor, the mission that I found best for my armor was over here in the Cardassian struggle. I went back and played War Games. And if you look here, um, you get a plethora of options of energy dampening armor and now it's mark 11 and it is rare so you get two modifiers um, so well, I looked at all the stats and I decided on the hit points and reg HP and basically the reasoning for that is the hit points or health points flat out add extra health to your character so it says plus 45 maximum hit points. So let's say your character had 500 health. Well, putting on this armor, he'll now have 545 health. That's all there is to it. It adds a flat bonus to their health. And as you can see, here's my health, 506. So it adds a flat health 
to their flat bonus to their health straight up. That's what the HP means, HP, HP or hit points or health points. And then on top of that, uh, it regenerates HP. It has a point three five health regeneration, which means basically it'll speed up their health regeneration after you take damage. Since the shield I'm using already has a shield regeneration, I decided this is the best option, so now I also have a health regeneration. So the shield gives me a shield regeneration, and the armor gives me a health regeneration. You can also get armors that that have um, reg SH, which is regenerate shields. Uh, this one example has hit points and then reg SH. This one does plus 7.6 shield regeneration, so it's a little bit higher than that um, that uh, that uh, phase shifted shield but uh, the trade-off is um, this, it, this one does not regenerate your health so since I already had that phase shifted one doing the shield I figured let's go ahead and get this armor which regenerates the health and so what an awesome combination for my bridge officers they have a shield they have a good shield and now they'll have good armor and that will pretty much um, I won't have to upgrade them anymore at all, even though there are technically better things you could put on them, because you can get very rare sh um, armor. I already have a very rare shield, but I could get very rare armor, which would be purple, and would give me three modifiers. And in fact, there are uh, there is armor that has HP, and then reg HP and reg HSH which means it gives you the hit points that you want. It also regenerates your health, and it regenerates your shield. That's probably the most awesome um, armor that you can get in this game, and you can get Mark 11, very rare of that, and put that on all your bridge officers, so you could do that. And I have that, actually, on all my other bridge officers on my main characters. But I have purchased those, I had bought those through energy credits, it's because none of the missions give that as a reward. And actually, it wasn't just energy credit credits, it was um, before before now, you used to be able to buy things with emblems. You would do dailies, like in the Petran cluster, and then you would come back, and it would only take like five or seven emblems, and then you could buy um, that very rare stuff that had three modifiers on it, Mark 11, very rare gear. And now you can still do that, but you have to do it with dilithium, but the price is so high, 22,000 dilithium to buy that stuff, and I'll show you where it's at. Uh, and I don't have that on Ensign Ricky. I don't have near enough dilithium right now to do anything. Well, look at my dilithium. I have uh, 9,000, 9,210 total dilithium, and you need 22,000 just to buy one very rare item like that, like an energy dampening armor. So it's... Um, yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to buy anything with dilithium right now. It's going to take months to build up enough dilithium to, like, deck out everything using dilithium stuff. So until then, this is the way to do it. This is the easy way that doesn't cost any money, and that's just to replay missions and get that gear. So on my bridge officers, here's my ANR, for example. Here's that armor, energy dampening armor, Mark 11, HP, Reg HP. And then my Borg, same thing, the shield, and the new armor. And then on my brain, I still need to do him. I have to replay those two missions again, so that way he'll have that gear, okay? So that right there, easy way to get good shields and good, ge and good armor on your officers. Another thing, weapons. You always want to have really cool weapons. And this game has some very unique weapons. And as you saw, for example, here's my brain. When we did the um, brain episode, we... Um, put in that CRM 200 and gave my brain officer that, okay? Um, my Borg, she already had the Synchronic Proton Distortion Prototype Assault Rifle, okay? So that's another unique weapon. So I left those two on them. Now what I did for my ANAR is I replayed one of the Romulan missions. Um, let's go back to the Romulan mystery and it is... Frozen. It's frozen. Go here. You know from the information you recovered from the Vahar Romulan system that the Tal Shiar are rifle, planning to 12. attack. So it's hard to say that while she was talking, but one of the rewards is that Romulan disruptor you get, and now it's Mark 11 because I'm level 50. Um, so I replayed that mission and I got that for her. So here you go. It's a Romulan disruptor split beam rifle, Mark 11, and it's a it's a rare item. Um, 
and it does pretty good damage. So that's what I gave my Anar to use. So now she's got a unique weapon. The Borg has a unique weapon. My Breen has a unique weapon. And for my Jim Hadar, I did the same thing. I replayed, I went back to the Cardassian struggle and replayed the FEs that give that reward. And that was way down here at the bottom. Um, second wave. Second wave gives you the um, full auto rifle, the Polaron full auto rifle, Mark 11 now for the Jim Hadar. I'll open this up. She's going to talk, but you'll see it. I'll show it. Oh, she doesn't talk. Okay. By now, oh, there she you is. face the Borg. <laughs> Jim Hadar. The collective is Polaron, appearing with more frequency rifle, in the Mark Alpha 11. Quadrant now. Okay, so that's what I did. I just replayed second wave and I got that. I also played it again and got it for myself so I could upgrade my stuff to Mark 11 too. So I replayed that and then I had to replay of Bajor. We've evacuated everyone we could to get to Bajor. The We're setting up a base there to coordinate Mark 11. Our okay. And then I also had to replay facility 4028 and this gave me the shield. The Federation Council has Jim authorized our the release of the founder from the detention facility okay. where she is currently being oh. held. I need someone who Aaron and the founder will risk. Fine. Okay, there you go. Not quite sure. Uh, be quiet, you. Okay, so basically now my Jim Hadar has his full gear. He has the Jim Hadar Personal Shield Mark 11, the Jim Hadar Armor Mark 11, and he's got the uh, Polaron Full Auto Rifle Mark 11, which enables all of his extra bonus stuff the Jim Hadar Shroud and the Combat Triage Subroutine. Alright, so that's awesome. Um, in order to do that, I did find out you cannot have the gear in your inventory. Like, okay, let's say I had that whole set of gear in my inventory and I went back and replayed those missions. I cannot claim any new item at that point because it says I already have it in my inventory. So you physically have to go put it on one of your bridge officers. Put it all on one of your bridge officers and then you can go back uh, and play the missions and claim it and then you can get another copy of it. And that's how I was able to have two copies of it. And as you can see on Ensign Ricky, I did the same thing. Here's the Jim Hadar Personal Shield Mark 11, and the uh, armor, and the uh, and the weapon, which gives me the full um, bonus, all three bonuses that you get for that. So, or two bonuses, or whatever it is. But uh, now he's up to up to date on Mark 11 Jim Hadar stuff now. This is pretty much the only ground set besides Omega and Mako for anything really so until you get your your uh, Mako and Omega s uh, sets from doing the STFs uh, the Jim Hadar set is the best thing you can have and I recommend if you're gonna do any STFs and you're new to the STFs and you uh, want to get into them um, do yourself a favor and get the full Jim Hadar set so you have all those bonuses and it'll just help your teammates out because at least you'll be geared well you'll be geared with the best that you can possibly have until you get the Omega or the Mako stuff and um, that will really help out people will be more happier with you when you're playing the SDFs because you're properly geared and you're not gonna die all the time or at least die as quickly and you'll also have good weapons too uh, it's not a bad weapon the auto rifle um, but uh, also you can equip a, another weapon as well. You just have to have that one equipped so the set bonuses work. And uh, I went back and played Skirmish again and got the uh, Federation Type 3 Rifle Mark 11 because uh, I just love that in this game. I like that. That's one of my favorite. Probably is my favorite weapon in this game right here. So now I'm equipped. Look at this. All Mark 11 stuff. There is no Mark 11 kits. Kits stop at very rare Mark 10. That's just the way they are. So now, um, my bridge officers are set. They have awesome weapons and awesome shields and armor, except for my Borg, which, um, not my Borg, my Breen, which I need to finish. I'll do that off screen. Um, but I wanted to stop and just show you what I'm doing. I've also been doing DOF missions. I've been, we're up to 21,000 now out of 50,000 for our diplomatic stuff. And I got three running right now. I got this very rare one that's going to give me plus 40 on quality rewards which is uh and I, I get plus 250 percent if i get critical reward on that and it's going pretty good i got two good uh doffs working on that one so hoping for something good there but i've been going through the different sectors and adding um diplomatic missions as i come across them because i want to get us leveled up in diplomatic stuff um 
and by doing that I have gotten some cool rewards for example uh, here is a device it's a heavy tetrion satellite turret and a, a heavy phaser satellite turret these can be equipped on your ship in the device slot and uh, it creates a level 51 heavy satellite tetrion turret for 300 seconds or a level 51 heavy satellite phaser turret and uh, they're limited obviously there's 10 in each one but you put them in your device slot and assign a button for it uh, from your ship in space and you can launch a satellite turret and the turret sits there and it's a satellite and it'll fire on anything that comes near it um, this is useful in some of the STFs, some of the space STFs, where you have to protect things like the Kang, for example, in Kier Space. Um, if you put some satellite charts around the Kang, this will help protect the Kang even more. Uh, you can also put some around uh, gates in uh, Kittimer Accord Space. Uh, put uh, put these satellite charts around the gates and that will help protect the probes, or s help stop the probes from going into the thingy it, ha it goes into. Um, so the satellite turrets can be useful and uh, and you get those just from doing DOF missions and I've so I've gotten a few of those actually you can see I have one more I went ahead and added on my ship and it's the uh, it's a heavy Polaron satellite turret and I went ahead and put it in the device slot and um, so now I can fire a turret from my ship a satellite turret that fires Polaron weapon and here's that subspace field modulator I was talking about again you get this from skirmish I should have got it before now but you put it in the device slot and then you can hit it from space and it gives you plus 34 all damage resistance for 15 seconds minus 400 proton resistance and plus 15 percent defense for 15 seconds and so it's pretty useful if you're taking a lot of damage uh, especially like hull damage and stuff um, you can just hit that right there and it will um, help if you want to read a little bit of I didn't want to use it I want to read um, when the subspace field modulator is activated, the ship phases out of its current variance, granting a resistance to all damage for a short period of time. While in this phase variance, you will be highly susceptible to proton. But I'll be, uh, I don't know of anything that fires protons. I'm, I'm thinking the Iconians are going to fire protons. But uh, anything besides that, pretty much, uh, it protects against all damage. So, put that on my ship, okay? And as you can see, I haven't done anything else. I haven't done anything to the ship yet. And there's a reason for that. And, um, well, I guess we'll just go ahead and explain that now. Um, yesterday, it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday. I think it was yesterday, um, as of this uh, recording. Um, the uh, In the sea store, a new ship came out. A brand new ship. Ships Federation class. And it is the... I already have it, so it's probably here at the bottom, because I went ahead and bought it. Here it is. Okay. Assault Cruiser Refit Regent Class. Now, what this ship is, is this is, well, we, this is, this is basically our ship that we have right now, which is the Assault Cruiser, right? The Enterprise E, as it were. It is this ship, um, with a plus one. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's this ship with just a little extra. Um, it's a refit of this ship. People in this game, including myself, have been wanting it for a long time because they have done plus ones of other ships, okay? Like the, uh, the, the, the heavy cruiser, for example, that I told you that I just absolutely love. They did a plus one of it, and it's the retrofit, right? And it's the one that I love and told you I use, okay? So this is the plus one variance of the Assault Cruiser. It's the Assault Cruiser plus plus, you can think of, you can think of it. Um, it's basically a redesigned Assault Cruiser. And it is now, it's the Regent class instead of Sovereign class. Um, but you can see how it's redesigned. It's, kind of, it's got how the hull is, um, how the nace nacelles are. And it looks a lot like uh, the Assault Cruiser still. But with a little essence of the Odyssey, you can feel the Odyssey in it, right? Um, but I like the um, overwrapped um, nacelles here and the way this is curved. Um, and the whole look of this and then look at these uh, little spiky things here on the back and then look at the profile from the side I mean that's just I know it's space and uh, you know this doesn't matter but this thing is aerodynamic I mean this thing like is slick 
and then look at it from this side. It just looks totally awesome. All right, so you can read a little bit about it here. The Sovereign class's first major engagement was the Battle of Sector 001 in 2373 when the Enterprise E led the fight against a Borg invasion. That's that's First Contact, the First Contact movie. The Sovereign soon became the standard for which all assault cruisers were measured. Now this Hallmark ship class gets an upgrade and sets a new standard, the Assault Cruiser Refit Regent class. The Regent class comes equipped with a Metreon gas canister console mod. Metreon gas is a highly unstable, but when properly stored, it can be safely replicated and transported. This console mod allows you to vent the gas from your Bussard collectors and ignite it at will. The resulting explosions can be extremely devastating. The console mod can be equipped in any console slot. It, it may only be equipped on Sovereign variants, including the Assault Cruiser and the Refit. Um, the Regent class also comes with a wide-angle quantum torpedo launcher. This torpedo launcher has been upgraded with a wide-angle targeting system that allows the torpedo to lock onto targets that would normally be outside of standard firing arcs, providing a 180-degree targeting arc. This launcher can be equipped on any starship, but you may only equip one, okay? So this new thing has a new console mod, which basically ignites Metreon gas behind your ship and can do a lot of damage to ships. Um, I guess you could like spray it on ships kind of like you do with that um, the warp plasma right now. You could like go across a bunch of ships with that and then ignite it and do a lot of damage to them I bet. And then what I really like here is this wide angle torpedo launcher. I can now I can now fire torpedoes at a 100 deg 180 degree targeting arc. Previously all, all torpedoes had a 90 degree firing arc. So you had to be kind of facing your enemy, you know, right in front. Well, this thing can fire a 180 degree targeting arc with its uh, torpedoes. That's awesome. So you could put a lot of torpedoes on this thing now and two, and then you've seen how we use torpedo spread, right? Put torpedo spread three, plus a couple of tor torpedoes on the front of this thing, and fire that. Oh my gosh, we're gonna you're going to see a bajillion torpedoes flying out of this thing. You could make a torpedo boat out of this thing, literally. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And it brings up a question I've always wondered. Why don't they have side-firing torpedo launchers? I mean, it's not hard. You have a, an aft torpedo launcher and a fore torpedo launcher. Why has Starfleet never put torpedo launchers on the side of the ship in the case you can't turn around fast enough you can at least fire the torpedoes from the sides of your ship I mean this is space we're talking about you should be able to fire, fire torpedoes from the top and the bottom and the sides you know all you gotta do is add a launcher bay for it and you know there you go so uh, it's a little pet peeve of mine in the real world you know it, we wouldn't be so concerned about a front and a back of a ship and all that kind of stuff you'd be able to fire weapons from all around it which is what it should be um, anyway, minimum rank, you have to be a vice admiral to fly this ship, so you have to be level 50, and we are now level 50. Hull strength is 39,000, shield modifier 1, crew 800, 4 and 4 weapons, 4 device slots, ensign tactical, lieutenant commander tactical, lieutenant engineering, commander engineering, and lieutenant universal, which I would put a uh, science uh, officer in that one because there's no other science slots. <laughs> Uh, console modifications, uh, it's got three tactical, four engineering, and two science. Base turn rate, seven degrees per second, so it should turn okay. Impulse modifier, 0.15, plus 10 weapon power, plus five shield power, plus five auxiliary. Metreon gas and wide angle. So, um, you already have this item in your inventory. Yes, I bought it, okay? I had to. I spent all my dilithium between all my characters, all my other characters, <laughs> right? And now I have no dilithium left to buy enough Zen so that I could buy this ship instead of doing the Odyssey which I know we had talked about a lot um, I want to fly this ship okay <laughs> I have been waiting for this ship for a long time and it's here now and it is technically an upgrade from what we are currently flying on Ensign Ricky and so I figured let's fly this ship <laughs> okay so um, that's what we're going to do <laughs> we are going to fly this ship. And uh, and I'm so excited. I cannot wait to do it. And so let's do it right now while we're... Um, that's what this episode's for, is upgrading this ship. So we're going to put that, put that, put that, put that. Just take everything off. And I don't have enough energy credits 
to spend money to upgrade my weapons and all that junk on my ship. I wish I did, but I don't. So, unfortunately, we're just going to have what we have, okay? <laughs> now, um, I know some people may still want to see the Odyssey, and there are three different versions of the Odyssey, and I don't think I've talked about that much, but there is the tactical Odyssey, there's the uh, engineering Odyssey, uh, and there's the science Odyssey. They're not exactly called that, but that's what they are. Um, if you go to the Sea Store, uh, ships Federation class, you'll see um, bum, 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 Odyssey Science Cruiser, which comes with some drones that help you heal your um, shields. That's what those drones do. And you have the down here, and I do own that ship. And you have the um, Odyssey Operations Cruiser. This is what would basically you put on your engineer or your engineering cruiser and it separates into two and I've been told it turns a lot better once you do that so that would probably be the one I would try first but 2500 Zen and 1318 I cannot afford it right now unfortunately and then the tactical cruiser Odyssey which looks like that and it has a little ship that uh, detaches from it and will attack your enemies and uh, that is the tactical one I own the science one I do not own the other two and then there was the free Odyssey that you got from um, the, uh, I almost said reunion, but I guess the um, um, anniversary, that's the word I was trying to think of, the anniversary of Star Trek Online, the two year anniversary, they gave away the Odyssey for free. But it is a standard plane Odyssey with no, mo with no special abilities. It's just, it's just a ship. Um, so those others that I showed you, the science operations and tactical, that would be considered the plus one variants of the Odyssey. And if I were going to fly any ship, I would just rather have the plus one. I mean, you know, I might as well have all the fun I can in this game. And again, I try not to spend too much money on the game, and that's why I use Dilithium now to buy Zen. Um, so it takes me a while to build up enough Dilithium. I play a lot of Elite STFs. And uh, that is the easiest way to build it up, because you get like a thousand and something dilithium for each one. So if you play a few of those a day, you know, in a few weeks, you can build up enough to um, to buy enough Zen to maybe buy a ship. And you can also do dailies to get enough dilithium to buy um, to buy Zen. So there's the region class right there, and uh, they've put it in the uh, space dock now, and you can see it outside. Oh, there's the Odyssey back there, and there's that. Uh, oh, that's the um, the the new heavy cruiser um, that is actually a uh, carrier. You uh, have fighters and stuff come out of it. Uh, but there's the region, and there's back there's the Enterprise D. It's still sitting back there hiding. So they still they got, they got a lot of ships in here. They keep adding them. I like that. It makes it look neat. Um, I have already claimed the ship, so it should be under my select ships. Um, and it's got a bug and not displaying. There we go. So here's all the ships we've had. There's the Die Harder. You remember her? Uh, die quickly. Eat by exhaust. Um, yeah, the Micro Peony. That was d uh, different. <laughs> the Multima. I have no. Oh, this is the. Uh, oh, this is the one I just got. Pandorica is, is, of course, what we're doing, and the toughest bricks. So, actually, the question was asked, did I get the free Odyssey on Ensign Ricky? Well, I don't see it here. <laughs> I do not see the free Odyssey, so maybe I didn't. I know I got it on all my main characters, but Ensign Ricky may not have been developed enough at the time to get it. And that's, uh, so I do not have the free Odyssey on Ensign Ricky, so there's the answer. Here's all the ships I have on Ensign Ricky. Uh, I've got I got the cruiser refit, light cruiser, heavy cruiser, a runabout, um, the salt cruiser refit I just bought, the Pandorica which we've been flying, and the toughest bricks is the uh, exploration cruiser refit. So no, I don't have the free Odyssey, so I'd have to purchase an Odyssey anyway. But we can do that later. I can make a whole episode of just flying around the Odyssey. Like I said, I'm probably not going to like it anyway. But I want to fly this ship, all right? <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And uh, this video may take a long time, and I apologize, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to fly my new ship. Um, set as current. 
All right, let's take a look at her. Gear her out. First thing, rename. And I already know what I'm going to name her. The USS Tom Baker. Oh, yeah, you know it. Any of you uh, old school Doctor Who fans out there, give a shout out. We are now going to be flying the USS Tom Baker. Um, Alright, let's get rid of these weapons because we're going to put better ones on there. These are just Mark 10 commons. Alright, now um, this is interesting. Apparently the Wide Angle Quantum Torpedo Launcher is actually not a function of the ship, but a function of the weapon. And um, I don't like that. I wish it was a function of the ship. I wish I could put, you know, more torpedoes up here and benefit from that, but it looks like you have to have this special one. Torpedo launchers, yeah, this prototype launcher has been upgraded with a wide-angle target. Yeah, so the only way to use, the, well, the, the only wide-angle torpedo you can have is this one, and it's going to be a quantum torpedo with accuracy, crit, and what's ARC? Oh, what's ARC? ARC-8. ARC, that's a new modifier I haven't seen. Oh, targeting arc. The targeting arc is a modifier. I see what they did there. See where it, where it says kinetic damage and then under that 180 degree targeting arc and ARC. ARC is a modifier now that describes that it has a wider firing arc. So this is the only torpedo that can fire a 180 targeting arc. So I could put my regular torpedo up here like this, and it's still going to have a 90 degree arc. So even if I did that, this is the only one that's going to fire at a 180 arc. This one's still only going to fire at a 90 arc. So there goes my idea about a torpedo boat. That sucks. I wish all of these console slots just flat out would have allowed the 180 firing arc. I wish it was a function of the ship because then you could install any torpedo you want. You could install a Harpang, you could install a uh, any torpedo, a plasma torpedo, a chroniton or whatever, and get that 180 arc. But the way they have it now, the only one that supports that 180 arc is a quantum torpedo, so you're stuck. You can only fire a quantum torpedo and get that 180 arc. That's a limitation that I personally don't like. They should have made it ship specific, a uh, ship, an actual ship stat, and not a special torpedo. Because I would have liked to have been able to put on any torpedo I want and give me more choice. And then you can have more custom ships that way. Right now, they're limiting your choice. But obviously, we're going to leave it on there because we want that 180 arc. So there we go. We'll use my other quantum torpedo down here, and we'll put my weapons back on here. And of course, we'll stick with Aegis for now until we get the Borg stuff, because that's all we got. We can put my uh, devices. Thankfully, it supports all the devices that I use. There we go. Um, and this torpedo we just won't be able to use for a while. Put it aside. Put my beams on there again. Eventually I'll get better stuff. I'm going to lose one of my engineering slots because of the Metreon gas canister. So, that sucks. But I'm going to put two EPSs on there. Alright. We'll put that in there. Science. I can keep my two phasers. And that for the, quant or for the quantum torpedo. Alright, so that's good. Basically pretty much close to the same as it was before. Now, we got to get our stations going on this thing. Uh, obviously I want a commander engineering station. That's going to be my Borg. Um, let's see, TAC-1. Okay, I want to get more tactical stations on this ship. That's a good thing. 
I just have to figure out... So I'm going to have to do some rearranging of powers here. Um, well, there's my torpedo spread three. I love that. And... I'm going to keep torpedo spread three there. And I'm going to have to change some of these powers. I don't want high yield, I want beam overload too. And then he is going to have to change. Ooh, I'd love to have t I'd love to have tactical team. Yeah, I can have him be tactical team. Okay, and we have a universe another engineering slot. Okay, that's good. And then uh, universal slot, well definitely I need one for the science team. So that's what I'll use that for. Okay, that sets them up. I, I wanna I wanna switch some of these powers though for my uh, I want instead of high yield two, I wanna get beam overload two. So we'll have beam overload two and then torpedo spread three. I definitely wanna keep that. Okay, and the rest of the powers look good. We'll keep them for now. Look excellent to me. Okay. Good. So that basically... That sets up my new ship. Let's go uh, look at it in the tailor here real quick. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Wow. So basically, uh, here's the templates. You know, you can fly any of the, um, there's the Majestic, the Noble, the Sovereign. You can make it look like a regular Sovereign if you want. Of course, the Regent, we're going to leave it as the Regent. And uh, just use the default settings because I want to see what that looks like. And you can, of course, mix and match things to make it look special. But we're just going to do standard Regent. And for my interior, uh, let's go ahead and set my favorite interior, which is somewhere. No, 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 no. Mm, I forgot what it's called. Unity. Yeah, Unity. Alright, Unity, Layout, Medium. Okay, Interior Sets. Exterior Sets. Alright. Let's go take care of that power real quick, and then we'll go to space and see what this thing looks like. Jim Hadar, you are now in that position. Let's see. Tactical space. And let's put beam overload 2. On Jim Hadar. And then let's put Okay, I can have two ensign. I can have two ensign things going on here. Let's see. Mm. Maybe beam fire at will, even though it's just level one. We already got a tactical aim. We'll use it because I don't think I've used it before. It'd be cool to show you guys what that looks like. So we'll go ahead and put that on there right now. And then, then I can at least show you what that power looks like. Because that's kind of cool. Um, and then we'll leave you tactical team. And the rest of you guys are good. So now let's go to my Jim Hadar skills and um, skill you up. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
all skilled up. And my my Breen, is he skilled? Heck yeah, he is. Just make sure everybody's got their skills. You're maxed. You're maxed. You're maxed. You're maxed there. You're maxed there. Engineering one. Yeah, you're maxed. Jim Hadar, now your sets. I am using you and you. Your sets. Attack one, be more. Torpedo spread two. Side two, I'm not using you. Okay. Everyone's set. Good. All my powers are set. One other thing I did, and also just um, kind of uh, improving Ensign Ricky here, is that I went into the tailor, and as you can see, I gave him the Vice Admiral coat. So at level 50, Vice Admiral you get a special coat that's opened up in your inventory in your um, tailor in the tailor and you can see it's, it uh, you know does this thing where it has like a flap and it comes down to here and it's pretty long comes down to here in the back and um, I, I put on it the Jupiter pants and the Jupiter boots and then gloves and I went ahead and added his rank in just a regular com badge. And then I put on the Jupiter Veteran belt um, right here, which I thought just looked really cool with the stars on there and everything. So now he has a little bit of a better look on him with the uh, Vice Admiral coat. Okay, now let's go into space. I think we've done everything on ground we can do. I'm going to have to rearrange all my buttons, which I hate doing, but... You know, it's got to be done. Ah, here we are. Let's move out of the way of everybody. Get away from all the people so we can properly look at our new ship. And here we are, here it is. So it's got the Aegis lines on it, they're not too prominent on this one. I bet it'll look good with some different shield effects and stuff on it. It's very sleek. It looks really nice. I mean, I just can't get over it. That's probably the best looking ship I've ever seen in this game. It's just got such a nice look to it. Wow. So that's it. That's our new Regent class right there. Um, let's see. We got the uh, Metreon canisters. Let's look at the stats on this thing. Crew recovery rate 66.3 right now. 250% uh, transfer rate. Yeah max power to weapons um, defense see the shields are running at 50 or the hull is running at 50,000 so that's really good hull strength right now uh, the one um, the one thing I need to add which I do not have is the shield console I need to get that but they're expensive and I only have 1 million energy credits left I don't think I can afford it but it's a science console, which means I'll have to put this somewhere else. But um, it increases my shield strength flat out. And uh, I definitely need to get that console, which I don't have yet. So right now my shields are only 9,000, which is not a lot. But but that's made up by the hole, which is 50,000. And I got 23% resist. Again, this is only Mark 10. I need to get Mark 11. I need to upgrade my consoles, which I can't do yet. There's my stats on that. Movement stats. So it all looks good. 128 on weapons and 81 on uh, shield power. That's really good. Um, let's set everything to auto fire because you know how I love that auto fire. And now to find a button to go back to what I want. Which is now hidden. Uh, 
Okay. Now, let's get all of our buttons how I like them. This may take a second, so bear with me. I like to pull all these off and start from anew. And then we'll look at my powers and what they do. Ball, ba pull that off. I know it's a pain. This is the worst part about getting a new ship right here. I absolutely hate having to reset all my buttons. To how I like them. Everyone likes them differently. It's <sighs> a pain in the neck. All right. Um, at satellite turrets. Do have a lot of weapons. Sorry, folks, this just takes a little bit of time to figure out where I want to put everything. maneuver. Ah, this is that Metreon gas thing. That's cool. Let's put that at the end over here. So they called it the Riker maneuver. That's from Star Trek Insurrection. So that's where they get that console mod from. Pretty awesome. Some space field modulator. Tactical Team 1, Torpedo Spread 3, ah, oh, there we go, and look at that, every slot filled, I mean, not one slot empty. Alright, so here's what I got, auto-rotate shields as I'm fighting or battling, gotta have that, your shield regen thing that I got, which is up to level 3, which is the max, 176 shield regeneration for 30 seconds. Reduces damage to shields for 30 seconds. I got the shield, shield heal, instant shield heal, uh, which is basically emergency power to shields, shield regeneration, shield power setting. Then I have the uh, actual shield heal and science kill buff, uh, buff, and debuff and cleanse and all that. Got the whole one. I have my polarized hole. I love the look of that. It puts those uh, square hexagonal things on it, whatever they are. Makes it look like it's all armored up. I got my Miracle Worker, which is up to level 3, and um, it gives me like instant 13,000 um, health points and shield regeneration and just really uh, boosts everything. Um, there we go. I'm braced for impact for uh, kinetic damage resistance. My engine speed, I like that. My full power to weapons, tactical team, modulator, beam overload, and then fire at will. Torpedo spread three. Let's look at that wide angle. See again, I don't know why don't I just put like a like a uh, launcher here on the side, you know, and here on this side, and, and then bam, you can short tor shoot torpedoes out the sides. I mean, why not? Put a torpedo launcher up here on the top, too, so you can shoot them straight up. Put some down here on the bottom, so you can shoot straight down. Bam, 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 bam. You can, like, bomb ships below you, you know? You can, like, fly over to space, right? Fly over ships and bomb them from above. Or, um, why don't they put impulse engines on the side? Why should a, t a ship have to turn so slowly like it does? Why can't you just put an impulse engine, like, here and here, you know? And then you're able to, like, spin around real quick and go... Pshh. 
Yeah, I don't know. They should space. I would if I were building a ship. I'd put engines on each side. I'd put weapon things on each side. Just makes sense. Um, and fire at will. So there's all my powers. Now here's what the subspace thing looks like. This is cool. Let's check that out. Makes it look like the ship is like invisible, half invisible. You can see through it. So that's really cool. Um, and then of course I can launch a satellite turret and uh, scorpion fighters as well. And then my fireworks. Unfortunately, it looks like we cannot see what uh, the Riker maneuver looks like unless we're in combat. So let's uh, let's go to combat real quick, shall we? <laughs> I want to see this thing. We'll try to find something quick here in the Sirius sector. Take out some Klingon ships. Getting some lag. Stop it. Oh, it looks so beautiful in sector space. Wow, it's really, really nice. Of course, that's with the Aegis shield, which has the uh, blue lines on the edges here, you can see, and, and underneath it. Other shields will make it look different, which will be pretty unique, really. Alright, Quantum Substream! First time we've used that, or at least first time I've shown that. <laughs> um, we are going at warp 29.9 now. Transwarp 29.9. Alright, stop, stop, stop. Engage, engage. Went a little too fast there. Uh, maybe too powerful for these ships, but um, we will see. I, I just want to see what this power looks like. I know you all are anxious to see it just as much as I am. I'm not sure how it works. Is it like release in front of me? Okay, it releases behind me. Wow! Holy mother! And it doesn't hurt me. Well, okay, it does hurt me. <laughs> wow! I destroyed all those ships. <laughs> Whoa, ho, ho, I feel powerful now. What's the regen time on this thing? It doesn't say. It has a clock counting down, but it doesn't tell me how long it's going to be. Oh, let's wait then, because I, I want to use it more. More, more, more. <laughs> Oh come on, this is taking forever. Okay, let's uh must be like a minute or two on the recharge. Let me show you what fire at will does, because that's pretty cool too. Awesome! I'm firing on multiple ships at once. And taking them out. So that's fire at will. It um uh, will fire on multiple targets at once. So you can imagine if you're using like fire at will 3, it really does a number on ships. So if you have a lot of ships around you, it's very useful. Man, I just cannot get over how good this uh, new ship looks. I like it a lot. I have to say, I do, I do. I cannot wait to get to Borg stuff on it, get it Borgified. Oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. Borgified. French fried, Borgified. It'll be nice. Very nice. But that will have to wait. So yeah, we're going to use this ship in the next couple of episodes. We still have the return, fluid dynamics, and a light in the dark. And we're going to do all those episodes with the Regent class. Sorry, no Odyssey. Oh, I did not want to fire on the ship. Stop firing. Stop firing. Oh, I didn't want to fire. And I destroyed it instead. Wanted to use the Metreon gas thing one more time and check it out. But it does take a long time to recharge. 
I'm not liking that. Got a long recharge time. Let's change instances. And there's no ships here. I feel so powerful on this ship. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I, I have, like I said, I've flown. I have flown the Science Odyssey on my main character, and it turns so slow. It it's just a nightmare of a ship. It really is, and um, I don't know. I just don't like it. Just just don't. I don't even like the design of it that much. Find a battleship or something. You know, there's a Negvar. Of course, he's minus 48, but let's shoot him with my thingy. Oh. Somebody else is shooting. But they're not doing much damage. So that's how you do that. And then you fire on it. And it'll explode. Wow, you could do a lot of damage with that. I mean, you can do a lot of damage. You can take out a lot of ships. Granted, that was well, way, 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 way below my level, but we'll try it out. We'll try it out on some Borg ships and stuff, because we've got more missions to do. In fact, the next mission we're doing has uh, Borg ships in it. So we will um, definitely be able to practice with that. Die! <laughs> Ha ha! I have one. You have dead. Okay, so there we go. The Regent class. I am going to like this ship. Now, of course, we uh, have much, uh, much more we can do on the weapon front. I want very rare anti-proton beams. That is my ultimate goal. I just can't afford them right now <laughs> on this character. Also, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and keep Ensign Ricky. I was thinking, you know, after this whole Let's Play series is over with him on the Fed side, do I keep him or not? Yeah, I'm going to keep Ensign Ricky. Uh, I may even rename him and just make him a f another character of mine because he's decked out pretty well. He has done well for himself. So, um, yeah, I think we'll definitely keep him around. Um, so, in the next episode, we're going to do the return. Which doesn't really give us anything great. Um, some armor, but none none that I would use. So the armor, again, I would use is in um, War Games. Which is energy dampening. With uh, better stats than that. But we'll do the return in the next episode. And then we'll have fluid dynamics and then a light in the dark. We'll finish all that. We'll finish those three um, stories before we do anything else because I want to get to the end of the uh, storyline and then go over with you guys what we learned and how it was all and hopefully you all liked all that and everything. So anyway, here is our new ship, the USS Tom Baker. It is Regent class, um, an upgrade from the Sovereign, just came out. I had to have it because I love the Sovereign and it's probably my favorite ship in the game so I just had to have it. Um, the Odyssey, meh. In the future, I might make one episode where I set up an Odyssey and fly it around and do some things in it, but I'm not too excited about it, to be honest with you. I'll do it just to show you guys, but uh, my ship that I'm going to stick with on Ensign Ricky um, is probably going to be this ship right here. This is his uh, final, you could say his final ship <laughs> for the game, and I'll be doing all the STFs in it and everything. So I want to gear it out really good. I want to get, like I said, Mark uh, 11 and Mark 12 even. When, once I do the uh, STS and get that very rare salvage, Mark 12 anti-proton beams. Um, and upgrade the uh, photon torpedo here. I guess I can't upgrade this one. But um, I guess we'll just be using quantum torpedoes. And then, of course, the Borg, uh, Borg set with the Mako shield is what I'll be doing. Borg deflector, Borg impulse, and Mako shield. And then, of course, upgrade all my consoles to get the best I can. You can get Mark 12 
rare consoles. So here I have Mark 10, here's Mark 11, and they do have Mark 12 rare. Very expensive, but they are out there. Um, so this is the ship I'm pretty much going to deck out to the extreme with Ensign Ricky, and then I'm going to finish getting my bridge officers. All I got is my Breen left. The rest are really set for in-game stuff. So there we go, guys. Um, just getting stuff set up. Got our new ship, and we're going to do the uh, next mission in the storyline in the next episode. For all those that stay to watch this very long and talky video, I very much appreciate it. I know it was all talk, but hopefully you learned something, and so did I, and that's all that... And, oh wait, the more you know, or something. G.I. Joe! Alright, see you guys later.